the past week, if you're a Nebraska fan, you can't do anything but grin ear to ear because it's been nothing but fantastic news. Unfortunately, though, for Nebraska, things have changed rather quickly, and it's not for the better. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope each and every single one of you had a great and fantastic Thursday. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. We've got a lot, and I mean a lot, to unpack and talk about in tonight's video, and I don't know what it is, but Nebraska can't stay out of the news. Who would have thought these words would ever come out of my mouth, but Nebraska is a hot topic. There's a new developing situation going on with them in the quarterback situation, and if you know, you know. It's a very unique situation to say the least. And also, we gotta talk about Alabama and the big time news that just came out for them. There's a couple other minor things we're gonna speak on. You know how it goes. It is mid-December. It is gonna be a jam-packed video. There's so much news and stuff in general going on in the college football world, so if you're not paying attention to every single thing, you're gonna miss out. I try my best to keep you guys up to date, and if you're enjoying the content, consider subscribing because we are now, guess what, guys? Less than 3,000 subscribers away from our goal of 310K before a new year. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Clap it up, clap it up. Major shout out to all the new subscribers. We're getting closer and closer and come on, man. I'm telling you right now, if every single one of you watching this video hit the subscribe button, we get close to our goal. I don't know if we'd hit it on this video, but I'm telling you, there's a bunch of you watching, you're not subscribed. If you like the content, consider joining. We'd love to have you here. I get it, trust me, you're probably like me. You watch a lot of channels and you just forget to subscribe or maybe you just don't subscribe to many. But here's my one and only pitch to you. It would help us out tremendously and it doesn't hurt you whatsoever, it's free. All right, Matt, they're not subscribing, blah, blah, blah. Shut the crap up. Now without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so first things first, just when I thought I've seen it all, Santa Claus, yes, the official Santa Claus tweeted this to me. Matt B. Ball, thoughts on me betting my house on Washington winning the natty? Well, first things first, thank you, Mr. Santa Claus, for sending this to me. And secondly, I don't know if I'd bet my house on Washington. I think that's a little bit too much, because when you bet your house, you want to be confident, right? Well, for me at least, I don't think that's a great idea. Now, if you want to bet a couple hundred, depending on how big of a ball you are, maybe a couple thousand on Washington... I wouldn't even be mad at that. Believe it or not, and I know we haven't talked about the playoff too much, and it's just because it's so far away and I don't want to hype it up when it's three weeks out. I think Washington has a great shot of winning it all. I know a lot of people aren't going to like that, but they match up really well against Texas, and I think they match up good against Bama or Michigan. Because the weird thing about Washington is, although they've played down to their competition all throughout the season, they always play up to their competition as well. They have an offense that teams like Texas, Alabama, and Michigan haven't even faced this year. And their defense, I know they're not the greatest, but I don't think they're awful. And I don't even think he's asking me a question because notice he says right here, Matt B. Ball, thoughts on me betting my house. So he's not asking if he should bet his house. He's basically saying, hey, I bet my house. What do you think about it? You know what? I'll do this. Let Santa know in the comment section. Is he going to be homeless in a month or two, or what do you think is going to happen? He's either going to be homeless, or he's going to take his winnings from the house and buy a mega mansion. We'll see what happens there, but didn't want to answer that, because I thought it was a good question. And if you ever want me to answer a question or talk about something in a video, just tweet it at me. Moving along here to our second topic, and I don't want to spend too much time talking about this, because this shouldn't be shocking news, but it is somewhat breaking news. Jalen Milrow, the quarterback for Alabama, he has announced officially that he's returning to Alabama next season. And I know, I know, I know, before you run to the comment section, I know what you're about to say. Well, Matt, where was he going to go? Trust me, I get it. For those of you who don't know, Jalen Milrow, if he wanted to, he could have declared for the NFL draft, only if he wanted to. And I already know everybody's going to say, well, he's not good enough, blah, 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 etc. I know, but the point is, he has announced he's coming back. That's awesome, and if you're an Alabama fan, this is great news. To go along with that also, late last night, I'm sure some of you may have or may not have seen it, but the SEC, they released their entire 2024 schedule for every single team. And no, I'm not going to sit up here and break down every single schedule for every single team. I'm not doing that because, number one, we still got to worry about 2023. The season's not over yet. And number two, I just don't think it's that entertaining to break down all the big time games. We know this. The SEC, it's going to be fun to watch next year. But here's what I will do. Since we're already talking about Jalen Miller and Alabama, I'll show you Alabama's schedule because we already talked about Georgia's earlier today. And Alabama's got a tough schedule, but come on now. Everybody in the SEC's got a tough schedule next year. It's going to be tougher than the last year for sure. Some notable games I see on this schedule. Week three, Alabama goes to Wisconsin. What about that? That's going to be an intriguing one, and obviously we've talked plenty about this. They play Georgia on September 28th. That's going to be a big one. Also got South Carolina, go to Tennessee, and also Missouri. What about that? Remember, Missouri's a top 10 team. Then they go to LSU, which is per usual, but also on the 25th, they go to Oklahoma. 
And of course, I finish out with one of the best rival matchups in all college football, the Iron Bowl. And the reason I don't want to hype up all these SEC schedules too much is because, like I said, it's so far away. I'll leave it at this, and I think we're all in the same boat. We, and when I say we, I'm referring to all college football fans, we can't wait for 2024. It's going to be awesome, but come on now. Who am I kidding? Every single year, college football is awesome, at least to me. Check this out, though. Paul Feinbaum tweeted out, and I thought it was a good question. If you could only go to one SEC game in 2024, which one are you choosing? There's a lot of good games to choose from, but for me, it comes down to two and only two. Either Texas and Georgia or Alabama versus Oklahoma. Those right there, in my humble opinion, are two of the best games in 2024 in the SEC. I could talk about that all day long, but we got to get a move on to the main topic of the main encore, the main reason you could talk to this video. What in the world is going on with Nebraska? Well, for starters, if you haven't already been keeping up with Nebraska football, there's been a lot going on up until this point. Originally, about a week ago, it was announced that, hey, they're in the front running for Kyle McCord. And then out of nowhere, a couple days ago, the big time breaking news that shot the entire college football world came out that Dylan Raiola is potentially going to decommit from Georgia and he's going to go to Nebraska. So within one week, Nebraska went from, hey, we don't know who's going to play quarterback to you might get former five-star recruit Kyle McCord and current five-star recruit Dylan Raiola. The past week, if you're a Nebraska fan, you can't do anything but grin ear to ear because it's been nothing but fantastic news. Unfortunately, though, for Nebraska, things have changed rather quickly and it's not for the better. And when I saw this, I wasn't just somewhat shocked, but I was completely shocked because I didn't think this was going to happen. Late last night, the breaking news came out that Kyle McCord, the guy that many people thought was going to Nebraska, he's no longer interested in him and he's moving on. Yep, that's right, you heard me correctly. There's not a way to ease into it. It just is what it is. And let me address this before I go any farther. I've seen so many people in the comment section talking about, oh, he's scared of competition. He's scared of Dan Raiola. He doesn't want to compete for the starting job against Dan Raiola and blah, 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 blah. You know what I got to say to all these people saying that in the Twitter comment section? Buddy, what are you talking about? Because Kyle McCord wouldn't have even been competing with Dylan Raiola. Dylan Raiola would have redshirted. I love me some Raiola. I think he's got a ton of talent, a ton of potential, and he's got a high ceiling, but come on, man. Kyle McCord wasn't running from Raiola in any of this. That had nothing to do with it. I wanted to get that false narrative out the way right now because that's just simply not true. And I know what you're sitting there saying. Well, Matt, if that's not true, why did Kyle McCord not go to Nebraska? What made him lose interest? And that's a great question because I'm asking myself the same thing. I wonder what deterred him. To be honest, it could have been anything. Maybe he didn't like the coaching staff. Maybe the visit didn't go good. You don't know. Maybe he realized, hey, I don't want to play for this team that's not going to be too good next year and has a not-so-great offensive line. It could have been so many different reasons, and I'm not even going to try to sit up here and speculate because I simply don't know. Also got to throw this in here. Maybe Kyle McCord's visits with other schools and just talking to other coaches, it's going way better. The bottom line is we could speculate all day long, but we don't know what went down behind the scenes. But here's what I will say. Now that Nebraska is obviously not going to be getting Kyle McCord, all your eggs are in one basket with Dylan Raiola. Because if you don't get Dylan Raiola, this is now turned back into a crap show. Last week, it seemed like Nebraska was at the highest of highs, but if you lose out on McCord and Raiola, you're going to be at the lowest of lows. I don't know what happened with McCord and Nebraska. If you know anything about this, please fill us in the comment section because I'd love to know. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. As I'm speaking and making this video, news has just came out that Kyle McCord, he is on a visit, or he will be visiting, my apologies, Syracuse this weekend. What about that? Hmm. Kyle McCord going from the Ohio State, one of the most prestigious brands in all of college football, to Syracuse. Huh. Well, here's my thing, just my immediate reaction to this. Why would anyone, as bad as Nebraska has been, but seriously, why would anyone choose Syracuse over Nebraska? I don't know, but the more I think about it, the more I'm starting to believe that something terrible had to happen during his time at Nebraska. Let me know your thoughts on that. Is there a real possibility and shot that McCord can end up at Syracuse? And while we're talking about Nebraska and whatnot, let me share this news with you. As of when I'm speaking, former five-star wide receiver that played Texas A&M, he currently has Nebraska in his Instagram bio. That's also something to pay attention to if you're a Nebraska fan. I don't see too many people talking about that. Like I said, Nebraska, they're a hot topic. They're in all the news. There's a lot going on, but we'll end it off there. Let me know your thoughts on all this down below. But, uh,